the chest burster, is by far the most terrifying stage of the xenomorph life cycle. The creature feeds off the genetic and cellular material of its host, stripping you of the very materials you need to survive. As it grows, the embryo sprouts out branches of macro and microscopic tendril-like roots that absorb nutrients and materials throughout the host body. And after it has taken everything it can from you, it violently and brutally erupts from the chest, causing an agonizing and painful end of the road for the host. Today though, I wanted to explore the specifics of the formative process that creates the chest burster within its host. The main question that is raised when exploring the process of the formation of a chest burster is what is actually implanted by the face hugger. While some have come to believe previously that the face hugger implanted an embryonic form of the chest burster, where it would grow and develop, that has since been proven wrong in canon. For a long time there has always been the speculation that a face hugger actually implants something that actually causes a cancerous like growth that eventually becomes the chest burster. Starting from the beginning, from reference materials such as Aliens, The Cold Forge, Wayland Jutani Report, and David's drawings, we get to see the explanation of the process and what it entails. Inside every face hugger is a collection of pathogenic and mutagenic materials that make up a chemical that is very similar to the black pathogen or the accelerant used by the engineers, and the same one featured in both Prometheus and Alien Covenant. It is likely that there is a heavy link between the accelerant and the mutagen substance within the face huggers. So in a sense there is technically no implantation of an embryo, as there is no embryo, and instead it's more of a transfer of this mutagenic substance that transfers from the face hugger's body through its proboscis and into the host's chest via their esophagus. This mutagen was given the name Plagiaris Praepotens by the company after their many studies of the xenomorph creature. After the infection phase, the Praepotens are within the chest cavity and can now begin their intensive work. These mutagens immediately begin a chemogenetic restructuring of the host's genetic materials and cells. The mutagen possesses a base xenomorphic genetic code, which is used as a template, whilst the mutagen attempts to take the host genes and transform them into the pure xenomorph genome. In this way, the whole xenomorph chest burster is constructed from its host's biological materials. This explains largely why the host will feel very hungry, thirsty, and overall physically depleted by the time the facehugger removes itself and dies. It is simply due to there being a massive loss of biomass for the host due to the chestburster's growth. Because of the overall unstable and uncontrollable genetic sharing process that occurs, there will not be a pure xenomorph born. This genetic sharing of information between the two is known as the xenomorph DNA reflex and between 5 to 20 percent of the chest burster DNA will be traits and genetic information directly inherited from its host organism, with the remaining majority being the pure xenomorph genome. The same occurs the other way around, and a substantial amount of the host's genetic information can be merged with trace xenomorph genetic materials. This is what allowed Ripley 8 and the xenomorph clones to be created in Alien Resurrection and for Wayland Yutani to achieve a better version of these clones in the Aliens Resistance comics from Dr. Hollis. The DNA reflex is seen in mostly subtle traits and changes, but can sometimes be more pronounced. With human spawn xenos, it generally means the xenomorphs are bipedal and generally possess a larger level or a greater level of intelligence. For xenomorphs uh, like the runner spawned by a dog, it means that the chest burster was already quadrupedal at birth. The pred alien is one of the most extreme versions of the DNA reflex, where the xenomorph has greatly enhanced strength, mandibles, pred dreads, etc. from its uh, Yajua host. 
After this, the chest burster begins to take shape, and it generally takes about one hour for the skull and inner jaw to take shape. The full gestation period after infection is largely subjective, and varies from host to host, and circumstance to circumstance. Some take a few hours, and up to a day or so. A queen burster will take significantly longer, and can take somewhere between two to seven days. During the gestation, along with the previously uh, mentioned fatigue, exhaustion, and starvation, will couple with nausea, migraine, shortness of breath, and sore throat to create a very uncomfortable time post-implantation. Nearing the end of the gestation period, the chest burster releases a number of enzymes to slightly weaken the tissues and bone in its surrounding area in the host. This helps assist the creature in breaking free of its fleshy prison with much more ease. The chest burster acts to escape as quickly as possible in order to ensure that it can quickly escape to a secure location where it can further mature. However, if left undisturbed after its birth, it is likely it will consume further materials from its host in an ideal situation for the creature, like when in its hive structure. So essentially, the formation of the chest burster via the Plagiarus preopotens is something akin to the mutagenic effects of the accelerant, featured in the Alien prequels, leading to the chest burster process obviously being tied to the engineer's mutagen somehow. Maybe the engineers created their bioweapons from study of the xenomorph, or maybe the xenomorph is the next stage of this weapon. But nevertheless, it is connected at some point, and hopefully we will get more details as time goes on. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content, the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.